This video is sponsored by Rcraft. Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tutorial session here in Procreate. And for today's video I wanted to show you a quick tutorial for getting some interesting marbling effects in Procreate. But this time we're also going to try to add some really nice 3D volume so that the effect almost looks like made with real acrylic paints on a surface and not just entirely flat. So we're going to start by creating a screen canvas size on a new file and using a monoline brush with a fairly big size, we're going to start painting some larger areas here with random shapes all across the canvas. Try to minimize the color palette to about four to five colors max. And as you can see here, try to also balance these colors around the canvas. Also, make sure that you are painting all in one layer, or if you are breaking it down these shapes into layers, make sure to flatten all of the layers before the next step. So next up, we're going to be using the famous liquify tool with all of the sliders pretty much set to the maximum value. This is where the magic happens. Starting at the center of your screen, work your way towards each corner and let the momentum and distortion of this tool do all the work for you as you slowly move the Apple Pencil around the canvas. Make sure to make a copy as well of the source layer, the source merged layer, because you're probably gonna wanna play around with the liquify tool a couple times here until you find something that you like and you're happy with the final result. Next up, we're going to talk about creating the volume. But just before that, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Artcraft. If you're looking for the most complete course for entry-level artists, check out Digital Drawing. With 44 intensive lessons and eight weeks of practice, this course will help you overcome all the barriers to the fantastic world of digital drawing. Master both Photoshop and Procreate as you expand your knowledge with step-by-step -step instructions, going from inspiration, idea search and sketch, to making your first drawing. Learn to work with color, practice smooth lines, discover core concepts of perspective, and choose the right reference for the job. With lifelong access to all lectures and powerful motivation and feedback from the teacher, this course will help you to turn your creativity into drawings in digital format. The course offers three formats with different price ranges starting at $1.99 for a one-day pass. So thank you again Artcraft for sponsoring this message and now let's go back to the video. Okay, now that we're back here with the tutorial, the next step is to go to the selection tool and using the automatic selection mode, find and select one of the paint colors. Next, tap on the save and load feature in order to make a saved selection. You can repeat this step and save as many selections as you want, but be mindful that some colors are going to be way easier to select and create selections than others. So now that we have a few selections here, let's create a new layer and go back into the selection tool and loading one of these saved selections, let's fill this new layer with a pure white color. Next, let's duplicate this very same layer and fill it with a pure black color. Set this black colored layer as a clipping mask to the white colored layer and now move the black layer to the direction where you would like the light and shadows to start to affect your image. Finally, in the layers panel, use a pinch gesture between those two layers in order to create one single layer. Now for this layer that you just created, the next step here is for you to experiment with different blending modes. Also make sure to add a little bit of Gaussian blur here as well to this layer so that the edge is a little bit softer. Curiously enough, I decided to go with subtract which completely inverts the colors on a black and white layer. Therefore, instead of highlighting the colors, it actually darkens the corners of the image. So eventually what I ended up creating was more of a shadowing effect to the edges of that section of the image, rather than something that brightens up the corners of that section. In terms of opacity, I'm using something around 35 to 50% opacity for those shadow layers. You can now load the next selection and repeat these very same steps in order to create more layers that give this nice feeling of depth within the paint sections. Remember to play again with the same levels of opacity in order to keep all the shadow layers cohesive. As a final touch, I just went to the website Pexels and I got a couple of free plastic textures that I could help by using those with screen mode and additive mode and creating some extra lighting effects. Apply them onto your canvas, scale, and reposition them 
and then add some Gaussian blur to smooth out the highlights. That's pretty much it. The effect is done and it definitely has way more depth and a feeling of 3D than if you were to just use this texture as a flat result from the liquify tool. This is basically the basic structure here for this effect. I'll leave it up to you to decide how many colors you would like to use on your illustration, how many shadow layers and any other graphical effects that you would like to use. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is always for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen there's always more content for you guys to watch, one is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.